Hello and welcome to Commodore 8-Bit Memories. My name is Aaron Baher. This is episode one of what I'm hoping will be a series of videos on just kind of some different things having to do with the uh, Commodore machines of the 1980s, mostly the Commodore 64 and the 128, uh, which are the machines I had uh, back in the day. So it's going to kind of be an assortment of games and other programs, uh, maybe some programming stuff, uh, maybe talk about some different types of hardware that were available. Um, it's not, not really a unique or new idea. There's a lot of people who have put out videos and, and things on the subject, but I thought I might have a, f a few uh, different ideas to offer. Um, this first one's going to be about a game called The Sentinel, which was a game that I was interested in back in the day. I thought it looked interesting, but I never did really get the hang of it at the time. I um, didn't quite understand how to play it. And back then, if you didn't have the manual for a game or if you couldn't quite understand it, you were just kind of out of luck. You couldn't go online and, and look up anything about it. Um, so I didn't really learn how to play this until later, but then I found out it was a pretty cool game. So um, one kind of neat thing about it, a couple of neat things about it. One is that it, it's actually 3D rendering, which at the time really pushed the machine to its limits. Um, you'll probably see that as I'm playing it, that the more stuff there is on the screen, kind of the, the, the slower it gets because it's it's trying to draw everything. Um, this was before 3D cards, before graphic cards really. Um, it was a graphics chip, but still all the all the calculations just took place in the main CPU so um, it's actually doing 3D rendering of a landscape um, which was pretty unusual at the time. Um, the other thing is that the levels are procedurally generated which is kind of kind of all the rage now with roguelikes and that that instead of having designed levels that are already prepared and saved on your disk, the levels are just created um, by some code based on the, the level number. So when you give it a level number and it just takes that number and then builds a world by running that through a random function. And so that enabled them to have a lot more levels because back then a disk only held I think 170,000 bytes which maybe you could have had a hundred levels on a disk if you needed to actually save level information but since it doesn't need to do that because it just procedurally generates them there's actually 10,000 levels in this game I don't know if anyone ever finished all 10,000 um, I've played through almost 450 of them myself uh, so I have a long way to go before I'll ever get close to all 10,000. Um, the one downside to that is that you could have a level that is created that you can't beat. Um, that would be that would be possible. But this game seems to be well designed enough that that is unlikely because I've like I said I've played through almost 450, and I've only found two levels so far that I didn't beat. I'm trying them maybe 10 or 12 times. Um, I don't know that those are unbeatable. They may just have been too hard for me, but um, generally it's it's well designed enough that you are able to get through a level and, and uh, beat it. Uh, it's named, if, if you go looking for this game, I should mention, I'm, I'm playing it in the Vice emulator. It's an emu emulator of the Commodore 64. Um, it actually, well, it has versions for all the Commodore machines um, that I'm aware of over the years. But this is this is the Commodore 64 this was out for, and so I'm playing it in Vice. If you go looking for it, you're looking for the Sentinel. Uh, there was another game just called Sentinel. That's a completely separate game, no no relation to this one. So this is the Sentinel, uh, published by Firebird, and I. Th I think 1983 or 84, somewhere in there. So you start the game up, you come to this screen, you press a key, and it asks what landscape you want to start on. Now, the only landscape you can start on without a code is zero. That's the first one. 
So if you just want to play, you know, if, you, if you're starting the game for the first time, you just put in zero or just hit enter, and you'll start on that landscape without needing a code. What I'm going to do is put in 444 because that's one I've played recently. I know it's beatable, um, so I can kind of show how the game works. And then it asks me for a secret code, which I already have. So I'll put that in. And later I'll show how you get the codes for the levels. I'll show that at the end. So put in the secret code. Now it'll bring up the landscape and show me that. Okay. Now the guy in the picture before, he's the sentinel. He's a, he's a big robot who stands up on a high point somewhere on the landscape. And this is him. This is him right here. Now, there can also be anywhere from zero to six sentries, which are like small um, lieutenants of the Sentinel, who act like him. Um, they do the same thing he does, but they do it from lower down positions on the landscape. They're just on normal landscape squares. He's up on this big pillar thing. Now, the way the, way the game works is the Sentinel and any sentries are slowly turning and scanning the landscape. So they, they turn, a, turn a little bit and then look, and then they turn another section and they look, and they gradually just keep turning and scanning the landscape section by section. And if they see something that doesn't belong there, they absorb it, they absorb its energy. Okay, so they don't move around, they just, they just turn and absorb. Now you, as the player, are also a robot, but you start out at one of the low points of the landscape. So I'll be starting out, I'll, it doesn't show where, but I'll be down in here somewhere in one of these low areas. And my goal is to work my way up to where I can absorb the Sentinel and, and the sentries. Okay, absorbing the Sentinel is, is how you win the level. So it's showing me this, this isn't this is mainly useful just kind of for one thing it tells you how many sentries there are so you know how many to watch for i know there's two plus the sentinel himself and i know i'll start down here somewhere so i'll go and press key now it'll take me into the actual world so like i said i am a robot now who is on that landscape somewhere somewhere towards the bottom of it and i can use in the commodore 64 version and it may be different on other machines, but you use S and D to move left and right, or to turn left and right. I'm not moving, I'm just turning. And you use L and the comma to move up and down. So you, you play with your hands on the keyboard. There's no, no mouse involved here or anything like that. So the first thing I can do, when you start a level, the sentinel and the sentries are asleep basically they're not moving they're not looking they're just standing there so i can move i can turn around and look and see what's what so there's a sentry right there looking off to the right that's his his face pointing out that direction now this is old you know 1980s graphics the the resolution here is 160 by 200 so things are blocky um there's another sentry he's also looking over to the right just keep turning around here there's the sentinel he's looking over to the left that's his face sticking off that direction so he's over there now once I do anything besides just turn around and look they're all gonna wake up and start scanning now, none of them are looking right in my direction so I'll have a little time to, to work with before they get to me and you'll hear hopefully you'll be able to hear the sound of the game you'll hear sort of a, a thump noise every time one turns or every time the sentinel turns I'm not sure if the sentry is making noise too or not but you'll hear that noise to tell you they're, they're coming um, now before I start up here on top above the the viewport area on the left you have the number of energy units you have now the way the way the energy works and the way you move around is you can create things and you can absorb things you don't ever you don't walk or roll or anything like that you move by creating another robot transferring yourself into that robot and then absorbing your old robot 
And the three things you can create are trees, which take one energy unit, blocks, which take two, and robots, which take three. So if you create a robot that, you, that uses three units of your energy, if you absorb a robot that gives you three units of energy. So the, the amount of energy in the world always stays the same. And the Sentinel is kind of doing the same thing. He's turning, and whenever he sees a robot or a block, he starts absorbing it, one energy unit at a time. And if he sees me, he'll start absorbing my energy one unit at a time, and if he absorbs it all, then I'm dead. That's the end of the, end of the game. So right now, what I have up here is showing me ten units of energy. Each little robot represents three, and the tree up here represents one. So altogether, that's ten units of energy. And so that, that's how it shows you, that's basically your energy gauge, how much energy you have. Over here on the right, this rectangle is showing me basically sort of a, a danger, a danger thing. Um, when the sentinel or a sentry spots me and starts absorbing my energy, this will fill up with with fuzzy graphics, and there will be a fuzzy uh, uh, what would you say um, a fuzzy sound um, to to alert you that you're in danger. So the way you move then is create another robot, transfer your your essence, whatever you want to call it, into that robot. And then, assuming you have time, absorb your old robot to get, to get the energy back from it. Now, you're trying to gain altitude. You're trying to get higher because you, you have to ultimately get up above the Sentinel to absorb him. Because you can, only, you can only absorb things if you can see what they're standing on. Now, like here, this tree, I can't absorb it because I can't see the square it's, it's on. I'll have to get up higher before I can absorb that tree. Down here, you can see this yellow square. And if I, if I move and turn around a little more, you can see these yellow and purple squares. I can build new things on them. I can build trees, blocks, and robots on them because I can see them. But you have to be able to see them to do that. Now, to, do, to build anything, what you do is you hit space, and that gives you a cross, uh, crosshairs. So now when I move left and right, up and down, I'm moving the crosshairs instead of turning my robot. And I can point that crosshairs at a square, any square I can see, and then I can build on it. Now usually what I want to do is I want to build a block, so I hit B to build a block. Okay, now I'm going to pause the game to explain this. Once you have a block, you can build on the block by pointing at the side of the block and this is how you this is how you can go up I can't see the top of this block but I don't need to because it's a block I can just point at the side of the block and then build something on top of it so I could build another block on top of this block or I could build a robot on top of this block now, I can also build trees but that isn't that's not useful very often so I probably won't be building any trees so I hit I'll hit R to build a robot or B to hit a block in this case I've got one block, now I'm going to hit R, build a robot on top of that block. Now I hit Q, which transfers me into it. So it's got to take a second to rebuild the whole view from the other direction now. Because you always end up, when you transfer, you're always facing back towards the robot you just left. Now I paused for a second. So I'm looking back at my old robot now. If I look up here at my energy units I'm down to five because I used two to build the block and three to build the robot so now I can point back at the square my robot is my old robot is standing on and I can absorb that robot so let me do that now if you listen see that if you heard that noise just then, that was the sentinel turning one notch. So he's coming, he's turning around looking for me. Now he always keeps turning. He's not, he's not smart about it. So if he's turning clockwise, he will keep turning clockwise. It's not like he's, he's smelling or looking around or anything like that. He just keeps turning and absorbing whatever happens to come into his vision. 
So now I need to find a place to move from here. So let me unpause and start looking around. Okay, there's the sentinel up there. So he's about to look at me. He's just about there. So I want to come maybe over here somewhere. Yeah, see him out. Now my my danger thing is filled up with static telling me that he's he's on me. So let me transfer away from that. Now, since he's absorbing that robot, see he got the first he got the first energy unit out of it, and then he got the first energy unit of that block. So but now I'm up a little higher. I can start absorbing things by pointing at their squares and hitting A to absorb. And you know, basically the more you absorb the better because you need energy to build new stuff to move up. Now over here somewhere Over here somewhere are these sentries over here behind me. I think they might, st yeah, they're still higher. I need to get up higher yet. Maybe I'll go over here. So I'll build a block. Build a robot on that block. Transfer into it. This is one thing you have to watch out for. I think I... No, I didn't. It's possible you can get yourself on the other side of of something so that you can't see what the square your old robot is standing on, and then you can't absorb it. That's kind of bad. Okay, now I've just absorbed that sentry. Now I can absorb this sentry. The good thing about the sentries, the, the sentries do make it harder because it's more things looking for you than just a single sentinel. But the good thing about them is once you get them, once you absorb them, they do give you more energy because each one is worth three. So, Alright, there's the sentinel over there. I've gotten the two sentries, so all I have left is the sentinel. I'm just kind of looking around. Okay, he's... He's turning counterclockwise, so he's pointing off to the left. He's coming my direction. So I can either go over here somewhere. There's a tree I can absorb. It's always kind of a race against time because you don't always get time to be looking around to see what he's doing. And you can hear him coming. And, and everything you do takes some time, so, you know, I'm... All this absorbing I'm doing is taking time while he's turning. Each tree is giving me one more energy unit. So I better get a, I better get a look at where he's at now. Because he's probably almost to me. Yeah. He's coming my way. So what I want to do now is I want to go over here where he was just pointing. Because he's not going to get there for a while yet. Put a block and a robot. Transfer into it. absorb those where I just was. Oh, he just got there. See, he just absorbed that block before I could get it. Now up here in my energy thingy, um, when you get five robots worth of energy, which would be 15 units, it saves some space by showing a, a different colored robot. You get a robot that's all one color instead of this two colored robot. So this first robot here, the yellow one, is actually worth 15 energy units. Then these are each worth 3, and this is worth 1 for the tree. So I've actually got 15, 18, 21, 22, which is quite a bit of energy. Even if the Sentinel spotted me now, it would take him a while to suck that much energy out, and I'd have a chance to escape. So you can see him now. He's turned. Like I say he's going counterclockwise, so he's going to turn to his left. I'll just watch him for a second so you can see how he works. See, there he just turned. and it, I don't know if it's 16 notches around every time he goes around in a circle or if it's 12 or 24. It's, it's something like that. But So what I can do now 
I know he's not going to look over here for a little while. So I'll put a block there. I'm going to make it two blocks. You can build as many blocks as you've got the energy for if you want. Transfer into that robot. Okay, now I can absorb my old robot and the block. One key I didn't mention is you can hit U and that flips you around so you don't have to turn all the way around. It just flips you. Sometimes that's faster than trying to turn because see now I'm pretty close to him. So when you get above the sentinel where you can see the top of his pillar, you have to absorb him just like you absorb anything else. So I make I hit space to bring up my crosshairs. I hit A to absorb the sentinel. Now you need to build a robot where he was and transfer into him. Once you absorb him, he's no danger anymore. The danger's over, so you don't have to, you know, you can you can take your time after that point. So now I'm standing in a I'm in a robot standing on the Sentinel's pillar. Now to end the level then, I'll hit H for hyperspace. Now what hyperspace normally does, if if you're anywhere else on the landscape, hyperspace uses three energy units and transfers you into a new robot somewhere else. It's just randomly chosen. It's generally somewhere at the same level or lower than where you were at when you hit H. But it's just a way to escape if you're if you're in trouble and you can't you can't find a way to build something to get away, you can hit H as a last resort as long as you have at least 3 energy units left um, and be popped into an, a new robot somewhere else. Um, it's not something you generally do as a strategy, although there are times when that's the only way to to move from a spot. But the difference is when you're standing on the Sentinel's pillar, then hitting H ends the level. And what it does then, you know, I talked before about the codes. The way it does, when you hit H and end the level, it gives you a code. And the way it decides what level to give you the code for is it takes however many energy units you have left and adds that to the level you were just the level you just finished. So right now I have 15, 18, 21 energy units up here. And when I hit H for hyperspace, it's going to use three. The, the H always uses three of them. So that's going to leave me with 18. So if I would do that right now, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it, I'm going to I'm going to snapshot this, save a snapshot in my emulator so that I can come back to this point. If I hit H, it's going to take that 18, and that level was 444, so it's going to add 18 to 444 and give me the code for level 462. Okay, so it just gives you, basically the more energy you end the level with, the more it, get, the more it lets you jump ahead in level numbers. Now, if I go back to where I just was, reload my snapshot. If I don't want to go that far ahead, if I don't want to jump 18 levels ahead, what I can do is use up some of this energy. Because you can't, you can't absorb anything after you've absorbed the Sentinel, but you can still make things. And so what I can do is I can say, okay, I'll make a block. That gets me down to, is it, uh, 19... And remember, th I'll use up three when I end the level. So if you go ahead and subtract those three, I'm sitting on 16 right now. So let's make a robot. Let's make another robot. Let's make another robot. Another robot. And one more robot. Okay. Now I'm down to four got three in the robot, one in the tree. I have four energy units. When I hit hyperspace, it's going to use three and leave one, which means it'll give me the the code for the very next level. And that's what I usually do because I've been I've been playing through all the levels. I didn't see any point in skipping any of them. Um, the levels don't increase in difficulty because of the way they're procedurally generated. Um, you might go from a 
a really easy one to a really hard one right back to a really easy one they're, they're not in any particular order so I've just been playing through them in order so I always wanted to end with one energy unit so that I would get the next levels code so if I hit H now that was level 444 and so now it's giving me the code for 445 okay, so that's how I've been doing it now if you just want to jump up as far as you can each time then the thing to do is to make sure you absorb as much stuff as you can before you absorb the sentinel and then you'll be able to jump up a, you know jump up several level numbers um, and you could work your way up to level 9999 um, you know fairly quickly because you could probably jump on average 20 to 30 levels each time you get a new code but I've been just going one by one and saving in a file so I now have all the codes for all the levels up to 446 I think at this point so um, I'll probably publish that online at some point because I I've seen a couple of short lists of just a few codes but I haven't seen a, a I haven't seen a list of that many so so that is how you play the Sentinel um, there are a few other little things that didn't come up in this level um, there's one thing where if the sentinel sees you but he can't see the square you're on he can't absorb you he he works the same way you do he has to be able to see the square to absorb what's on the square so if he sees you and can't see your square what he does is he creates this thing called a meanie um, he, he actually takes a tree that's near you if there's a tree near you if there isn't he can't do it but if there's a tree near you he finds it he turns it into a meanie, which is a, which is a robot thing that looks around, and if it sees you, then it forces you to hyperspace, which is usually bad. Um, when that happens, it's usually it's hard to recover from that. But so that's one that's one thing that can happen that didn't come up um, in this particular one. But basically, what what I just showed you um, was an, an easy-ish level, but it covered most of the things that that come up in in playing the game. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'll be back with some more episodes, um, other things having to do with the Commodore machines of the 80s. Uh, I think I will be doing some, some programming stuff here pretty soon. Maybe some basic or uh, machine language uh, programming things. So hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, tune in next time for more Commodore 8-bit memories. Thanks for watching.